Welcome to r r Relationships in Real Estate. I'm your host, Chris Silva, and with me is my beautiful wife, Corey Silva. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here on r r Chris and I are the owners of Silva Realty, Silva Lending, and Silva Property Management. And we've been in the real estate and mortgage industry since the early 2000s. We're super excited to have you all here with us today. Thank you so much for showing up and showing your support. We appreciate you. We'll move over February. Is it March yet? Welcome to the final week of February, the shortest month of the year, and it feels like it will never end. Well, I don't feel that way. I feel like my days are flying by. Has it felt like it's slugging along for you all, or are the days just flying by? Because I feel like there's never enough time in the day to get everything done. I'm, I'm in that uh, audience, too, where it's going by way too fast. It's because we always have so much to do. Right. Can we just maybe ask for like two more hours every single day? If we had two more hours of every single day, we'd still be working those two extra hours and be even more tired. You're probably right. <laughs> You're probably right. There's so much to do every day. So There's yeah, every, a lot. Every single week flies by. It does. I can't believe it's going to be March already. I know. We're already approaching the end of the first quarter. It's insane. Spring is almost here. Mm-hmm. 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 Where is the time going? Well, uh, enjoy any bit of sunshine that we have because it's going to keep raining again, y'all. Drizzle tomorrow and Friday with a full rainy Saturday. And then it's supposed to rain sometime next week as well. Remember when we were in a drought? Yeah, those days are way behind us. Right. (laughs) Now, for people that don't understand, though, we can easily get back into a drought because we don't have enough means to hold the water in California. Mm. But they are starting to build on some some more reservoirs. Well, I hope so. I so mean, it's not going to benefit us now. This rain's not going to benefit us now. But you know, maybe from five years from now, if we still have some rain, might be able to catch it then. Oh my goodness! Well, I was talking <laughs> to my parents over what was it last weekend, and they were talking about how the lake that we used to go to all the time growing up, Lake Mead, was down so low. And I think a lot of people heard about this in in um, news reports about how low it was that they were finding. Old abandoned boats. The old mafia uh, dead bodies laid up. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. But they said that the water is so high now. It's back to what it was before this drought from all the rain and all the snow. So it's nice. One other benefit we don't see is the water table underneath the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was filled before these rains. And that's that's according to the water agency, SEV Water Mm -hmm. Agency. Like we're in some of the we're in the one of the best situations for water here in Santa Clarita. Thank goodness. So and if you walk around and you look at these mountains, they're, they're usually, green. They look so beautiful. I feel like I'm somewhere tropical. They're usually brown. Yes. And yes, I've been fooling myself and telling me telling myself that I'm in Hawaii right now because all these green mountains. I know. It looks so beautiful. Just enjoying it. We are enjoying it now before the summer heat kicks in. Because before you know it. Spring will be gone and it'll be summer and people will be complaining about how hot it is. Exactly. Well, Tanya is here with us. Hey, Tanya. She said, hey, guys, happy Wednesday. Well, happy week before your birthday, Tanya. Tanya has a birthday coming up this Saturday. She's going to be 21. Yes, she is. So we're going to celebrate like she's 21. (laughs) I'll have a mocktail. A mocktail, right? (laughs) And Monica is here as well, too. Hey, Monica, how you doing, girl? She said, hey, friends, happy Wednesday. So I got to see Monica yesterday at jiu-jitsu, but I was a little sad. Not going to lie. You didn't get to spend that time. I didn't get to wanted. spend that QT with her. We had to go run, try to find a an office chair, which we unsuccessfully found. So, um, yeah, I didn't get to see my girl. Hopefully I'll see her this Thursday at jiu-jitsu. Yeah, so I, I think you used to be from the, the, the thinking of, I need an office chair that looks nice. Mm -hmm. It has to look a certain way. Are you still in that mindset or are you more like, I need some comfort. I need my back to feel good while I'm sitting in this chair seven, eight hours a day. I want both. I don't understand why I can't have both. I need a chair that is going to be functional, comfortable, and beautiful. How is that too much to ask? Good luck. (laughs) It's not happening. Why not? There's no way that you're going to get a chair. We are in the year of 2024. This is ridiculous. It does not exist. It should. Not your taste of chair. Like, it's it's not going to, the most comfortable chair is not going to look how you want it to look. No, I think Guaranteed. It is. I found one. 
I'm going to order it. And hopefully it's the one. It's going to be the most uncomfortable chair when you put it together. Well, thank you for your positive energy. You right and I love that you're putting that in the universe. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it doesn't exist. Either people, either companies are really good at making them look aesthetically look good mm -hmm. or they're known for the comfort. But I don't think they've been married yet. Those those two things don't exist together. You used to think that way about a recliner. You used to think like, I need to get this recliner, right? And you didn't care that it was going to be some bulky, ugly leather I don't know what recliner, but what do we have in our house now? A functional, I'm not in beautiful love with our recliner. recliner. It's not beautiful. It's it looks nice. Uh, it looks okay. Wow. What did I what did I tell you when I went to go pick up this recliner? I didn't even know that it was the recliner. Right. Because I was like, there's no way in hell I know I know she didn't buy this recliner because of the color of it. And you did. So I just it's so comfortable that I'm happy that I have I a recliner. I love how Chris is like dogging this chair. When we're outside of this show, he's telling everybody about how much he loves his recliner. Yeah, I love laying in my, it's so comfortable, but it doesn't look the best. Like it's, I don't really like that color. Okay. All right. I think it looks nice. It looks really nice. <laughs> well, Tanya had some comments here. She's laughing because she says she is 21. So I guess she's turning 22 this Saturday. Nice. And, um, Monica said, sorry, we had a run after class. So they probably had a lot of things going on yesterday. And she said, friend, I sent you a message on TikTok with some chairs. And she actually did send me some chairs for the office that I guess are popular on TikTok. And one of them is this functional chair where you can sit on it and have a little backrest. And then you swirl it around and then you can sit on the chair and then have your legs up. Or you could sit Indian style on it, or Indian um, crisscross Criss applesauce. applesauce. Sorry, I was raised in the 80s. That's what they told us. So, of course, I just have that ingrained in my brain. And, um, yeah, I looked at it, and I'm like, I don't know. I feel like my lower back might hurt with that one. I can't. I saw both chairs, Monica. Thank you for sending that. Thank you for being so, so thoughtful. Sweet. It's the sweet. other one looked really nice, the well, one without the armrests. But I think I need something with armrests. Yeah, when I look the at a chair, style that was nice. When I look at a chair that looks really nice, like the second one, it did look really nice. Yes, I'm like that looks so uncomfortable. Well, Chris, yeah, he's just gonna be the Debbie Downer today. I'm just a realist. Like it's, I, ha I haven't experienced both. Our producer has a nice chair. Mm -hmm. It's probably not your style of the way it looks, but it's really comfortable. I was like, if you're gonna get a new chair, just look at the brand, look at the type. Order it online. Bada bing, bada boom. Done. You got a comfy chair. Okay. All right. Why don't you get that chair? Um, Tanya said, your recliners are so nice and comfortable. Thank you, Tanya. And I guess that's what Chris backpedaled and said. He just doesn't like the look of them. He doesn't think they look very They're nice. They're super comfortable. I've always, that's what I love about them. I think they look nice. That's all that matters to me is that it's comfortable. So if I could deal with having a leather recliner because mm -hmm. it's comfortable, I could deal with having whatever you call the, the color that we have. What is it? Like a teal-ish? It's like a sea foam color. Sea foam color, like yeah. that's not my color that I'd want on a recliner, but I don't care. It's so comfortable. It's worth it's worth whatever color it is. Right. Well, Monica said, "Get a gamer chair. Those are comfortable." Laugh out loud. He we did. sat on those too. Yeah. So I wasn't maybe, a fan. Maybe we'll have to get a gamer chair. I wasn't a fan of the gamer chairs either. <laughs> well, catching up with the Silvas, uh, you know, there's just a little bit of things trouble in the Silva house. Uh, that we've been experiencing some homeowner hiccups. I mean, who doesn't have these, right? As a homeowner, you're always going to run into some challenges like clogged toilets. Uh, the dryer sounds like it's going to take off the runway. <laughs> and, you know, some more Tesla drama. So let's you, get into it. You know, every house deals with this. Right. Because even when you're a new, uh, you, let's say you buy a new construction home. Right. There's a bunch of things that go wrong the first year. Absolutely. It's just normal. Yes. And now, you know, usually you get past that like after year two and then you have like a good five year run where you don't need to do anything. Right. And then you have to do maintenance just like on a car. You buy a new car, you got to maintenance. maintenance the car. Yeah. So we're on year 17 of our house. Yes. So, yes. There, there's, 17. There's things we got to do. This month is our 17 years in that house. Is it? Yes. We got it in February 2007. Hmm. Yep. Okay. He said, okay. Well, I just want to know, do you all have like wipes that you offer in your house? Like flushable wipes or just the regular wipies? I'm curious because who flushes wipies down the toilet? So 
this has been an ongoing problem in the house. And like, I'm already oh, like, my I don't goodness. try to come off as a dick, right? But sometimes like, I know I come off that way, right? Yeah, I'm just really. very, very right to the point about stuff. Right. And this has to be like the fourth or fifth time that we've had our after family dinner that our toilet has been clogged. Right. Like the next day. Uh-huh. And it it's, doesn't happen right off the bat when you flush wipes. It backs up later. Right. So it'd be like 24 hours later or whatever, then it backs up. And um, this happened multiple times. And this is like the third time where you can't even plunge it. We it have to get a plumber horrible. out there. Horrible! It was horrible. Do we ever have to get a plumber before? Lance has been out there oh, a couple yes, times. Yes, he has. For that toilet, yeah. and it's only the downstairs toilet. So we're like, ugh, we're just gonna have to hide these wipes. I, yeah, I no think, more wipes in the I house. I think everybody's gonna have to have a dirty bum when they leave our house. Sorry, go we'll clean your booty at home. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the only that's the only way about it. I mean, I mean, after two days of frustration, because cr- first I tried to plunge a toilet, Chris tried plunging it. And we could not get it to budge. I mean, I created a new toilet plunging workout because <laughs> my arms were shaking, and the veins were popping out of Are my you face. Sure, I was that sweating. wasn't just the frustration. I think you were just angry while you were doing it. I plunged. It. I, I thought I was going to break the handle you, on that plunger. I was plunging it real good. I wish you would have plunged the shit out of that toilet, but <laughs> I you tried. did not. <laughs> I tried my best. You did not. I thought for sure. I was like, if you know what, I'm going to get it eventually. Like if right. I hit it. 50 times, 100 times, it's going to come out. <laughs> Nothing. It was like your daily 50. It was my daily. It did not work. Though. Oh, my gosh. So after two days of frustration and $130 later, <laughs> our toilet works again. <laughs> wow. You, so one of the, the gym I go to, their bathroom, uh-huh. they have single ply toilet paper. Right. And I think that's what we have to do with the downstairs bathroom. You do the single ply because it doesn't get clogged. No, I talked to my cousin. He said, are you using Charmin? I said, no, I'm not using Charmin. I know that clogs the toilets. All right, good. You you using Kirkland? You using Costco? I said, yes, I am. The three or the two ply? Two ply. Okay, you're good. <laughs> he already gave me the rundown. I know what toilet paper you're supposed to use. You got to so. ask a plumber what toilet paper to oh, use. Oh, my Lord. So, Yeah. Um, well, our producer just said he uses Charmin and he doesn't have these issues. Well, well it is a, it is, uh, known to back up toilets according to plumbers. Yes, it is. It, it's, it's a thing. So I, I know you like the soft one, the, the two ply softy. Well, um, <clears throat> let's stop talking about toilet paper. <laughs> um, I think Chris has started to second guest being a Tesla owner and I know there's no more oil changes or tune-ups. You don't have to visit the gas station. Um, but we've had to have a technician come to our house to change the air filter the other day. And you guys, our car smelled so awful. And I didn't know what it was. I thought maybe it was just from the rain. But this has happened maybe three times now where it is almost like a dirty gym bag got left in the car after it sat out in the rain and then sat in the car for maybe like two weeks and just like fermented in the car. It smelled so bad. Well, you guys, and for a while. And when you put the air or the, the heater on, it blows right in your face. For a while, you and the kids, and they probably got this idea from mom, were blaming me because it was my gym bag going <laughs> 10 minutes from the gym or from jujitsu back home. Daddy, why do you smell so bad? Daddy, can you not take your gym bag in the car? So then I was starting to put my gym bag in the frunk. Right. So that way, like the smells isolated, right. but it wasn't my gym bag. It was just like this weird. That was the last stench. Time. Yeah. I don't know why it was so bad. So you know, that's never happened in any other car I've owned in my <laughs> whole life. Has a car smelled like that before? Right. I know. I I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why? Why does this happen? Are there any other Tesla owners out there that are experiencing the same thing that your your car just smells like hell because because <laughs> of the air filter? So well, it turns out it's the air filter. Um, because we went on the app and requested a technician come out and change it. So luckily you don't have to go somewhere. They do come to you, which is great. Um, but I was talking to the technician, like, is this normal? Are we the only ones experiencing this? Cause it seems like it happens often. Oh yeah. You got to change them out every 12 months. We probably got to change them out sooner because I run the AC all the time. I mean, I don't know. 12 months, y'all. So if you have a Tesla, make sure that you change your air filters. And you can't just do it yourself. A technician has to do it for you because they have to take apart your dashboard to get in there. 
Insane. It's crazy. Hey, at least we don't have to go do, do two nights. Speaking of hate, Evelyn says, hey, guys. Hey, hey Lulu. Lulu. Thanks for joining us. Evelyn's here with us. And then Monica. So my wife does talk about me when I'm not around. Yes, I remember them blaming you over that smell. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> well, you stanky sometimes. <laughs> what do you expect? You're fighting for your life in jujitsu. Oh, you go sweat a bit. And sp speaking of those deathly odors, you know, who else out there has been affected by the Chiquita Canyon landfill? Ooh, yikes. This is crazy, y'all. I don't know if everyone has seen this. Um, there's a bunch of stuff circulating around on social media, and we're even getting stuff in the mail now, too. There is a huge class action lawsuit going on um, with the Chiquita Canyon landfill, and you can smell it outside. I mean, I think even at jujitsu, we smell it a lot of the time, right, Monica? Where we're like, what is that smell we're smelling? I'm wondering if that's what we've been smelling that smells so awful. Um, and on top of that, it turns out that they were illegally dumping toxic waste. It's crazy. There's so many violations against this landfill. And um, just more news just keeps coming out about them. And we have a news report that we're going to watch together um, about the landfill. Let's watch and it. And their wrongdoings. She looks like she's smelling it right now. Oh, man. And we have some new developments on this thing because the California Department of Toxic Substances is actually reporting that Chiquita illegally put into trucks illegal toxic waste and shipped it out of here to facilities in Gardena that were not supposed to receive it. That's number one. And the EPA just released a statement saying that Chiquita is an imminent, they use that word imminent danger to the community. Oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. Our town, shut it down. Santa Clarita residents protest after hearing serious allegations against Castaic's Chiquita Canyon landfill, which according to California's Department of Toxic Substances, is now being investigated for illegal dumping of toxic oh waste at a Gardena facility late last year. My understanding is the truck that went to Gardenia and others that may have with hazardous waste was being mislabeled by the landfill as non-hazardous. And that oh is gosh. why they received class one violations in regard to that being a negligent and or willful misrepresentation. I wonder what the else they're doing. The has already been cited by the South Coast AQMD for problems controlling what one of their own investigators captured wow. an explosive leak off last November. That's just wow. when the investigator's That's there. What else is happening when, when no one's there? Right? Comes in contact with the bear. Would hate waste. to be that guy working right there. Look at this. More AQMD video. I look like our toilet this weekend. Chiquita has oh blamed excessive rain for problems containing the toxic substance, even a possible cause for stronger landfill odors reported by nearby residents to regulatory agencies. Or I understand from AQMD that just in um, January they had over 700 complaints, and then this month alone in February they've got over 1,400 complaints. Although wow. residents in communities like Valverde, which borders the landfill, claim it's about more than bad smells and my four-year-old's getting frequent headaches um, my seven-year-old is getting nosebleeds oh my god horrible. other parents at live oak elementary along with pet owners claiming their dogs are getting sick even a tortoise rescue reporting animals dying oh. unfortunately in the last year we've had three tortoises die on our property and if you know about tortoises you know they live longer than us so there's something quite there's, off uh, horrible so horrible Chiquita issuing a statement late this afternoon saying they welcome the scrutiny. They're doing the best they can to fix some of the uh, some of the problems. Uh, Catherine Barger, the supervisor for the area, also saying that while she would ask the company, for example, to help people relocate, it's not justifiable to close it down at this point. So people are angry. How is it not justifiable? I, I was here in 1997 when I covered the Board of Supervisors, by the way, did not include Catherine Barger, promising to close it down by 2019. Wow. Not only have they not closed it down, they've expanded it and allowed more of these communities to be built around it. Wow. So we'll have to see what happens, especially with these latest allegations of those trucks moving toxic waste. That is going to be big with the feds. We'll keep you updated. They promised to close Clarita. it back then. Well, I know that they had several violations and they were supposed to not be operating anymore. Over the weekend, there was an explosion there too. Wow. Like a hydrogen uh, peroxide explosion happened. Someone went to the hospital who was working there. 
all kinds of crazy stuff over there. So I don't know about this side of town. Uh, we host this podcast here in Canyon Country, but I know over in Valencia, um, Stevenson Ranch, Castaic, Val Verde, mm -hmm. there's a lot of complaints about the smell. Mm -hmm. And that's that's just on social media that I see because we're part of a lot of like different community pages. Right. So I see people complain about it on there. Like, I can't go outside today. I'm stuck in my house. I can't even enjoy my backyard in this brand new house I just bought. Horrible. Horrible. <sighs> and it, she says there's no um, justifiable reason to shut it down. That's what the supervisor is saying? What do you, what do you it's a, an election year. So. I mean, it's not justifiable probably because it's not in her backyard, probably because she lives in a different part of the city. I mean, if it if she was personally affected, I think that would be justifiable, right? Exactly. And I, and <laughs> what I heard, and I don't know this to be true or not, but I heard it's the trash from like Calabasas and Agora Hills and all in that area. Yeah, it's not e even trash from here. Even though they have a landfill there, they uh -huh. have one right off of Agora. Right. They bring it to a landfill near Santa Cruz. I know it's not even our trash that goes there. How, help me make it make sense. Yeah, I just don't it get make it. Doesn't make sense to me. At all. I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense. So how close would the new house would have been to this? It would have, we would have been really close. We would have went through with the purchase, huh? Right. It would have been right over the hill. Now, you know, we were so excited about getting ready to buy that house. Right. I, maybe I was a little bit more excited than you were. And, you know, we had to wait maybe six months before we received disclosures mm -hmm. about all these different things. Right. And I... And, I don't remember off the top, but I want to say there was a small thing talking about Chiquita Canyon because they got to talk about what's nearby. Yeah, but it's very but it tiny. They don't talk about all these violations. And to hear the news reporter saying that she remembers being out here when they the, they promised to close it down by a certain date in 2019, I think those type of disclosures need to be a little bit more in depth. Well, think about this, right? So we have Williams Homes over mm -hmm. in Castaic. We have Five Point. I mean, it's a little farther away, but Five right. Point's pretty nearby. And mm -hmm. we'll talk about Five Point later, but that's like a 20,000, approved 20,000 um, residential units going up over there right. over, the, over the next few years. And this is all in the vicinity of Chiquita Canyon Landfill, close enough. And Val Verde is right there. And Val Verde, there's a whole community that's been there. Um, just think why most of these new construction, they never allow real estate agents to actually represent the buyer. Mm -hmm. they, they say we're as a referral, right? right? So what we tell our clients when they take us there is, hey, they're going to set up appointments with you guys to go over stuff, paperwork and whatnot. They're not going to tell us about it. Right. You have to keep us in the loop and tell us about it. And part of it is these disclosures. Right. It's so important to have an agent that not only is just an agent, but knows how to read disclosures, is yeah. going to spend the time and read four or 500 pages of disclosures because right. that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of disclosures and this kind of stuff has to be in there. Right. And you're not reading it if you're just buying a house and you're excited, you're just clicking. That's the thing. I think they they um, have really become reliant upon DocuSign and the, they don't sit there and go over it with you. They just assume you're going to read it. Right. And a lot of people get excited. Like you said, they just click. They don't go back and read everything. <sighs> Oh, I feel so bad for it. anybody that lives in the area that's being affected by it. I, I feel mean, terrible for them. Some of the stuff, you know, you, you maybe you don't smell it now, but down the road, you could be affected too. Because I think they said the radius goes out even past Stevenson Ranch down to Newhall, all the way around. There's like a huge radius. Um, so if anyone needs any information about it, reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help um, give some more information about it. So, so. In more local news, yes, uh, another business goes under an SDV. Do you want to tell us about it? I mean, uh, yeah, I guess we could talk about it. So a lot of businesses have been shutting down, but do you guys hear about Black and Blue? They have permanently shut down their restaurant slash bar. We never actually have been there, but from what I hear, I mean, there's a lot of action going on over there. There's been, you know, fights. Like reported stabbings, hit and runs. I mean, it's all on video. So we wasn't there shootings too. There was a shooting there. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much going on at that place, and I was a little intimidated by it. So I never even had the desire to want to go there. But you know, we follow a few different accounts on social media, and uh, the owner of Black and Blue said that they were shutting down because the city was not nightlife friendly. 
Right. And so I thought that was really interesting. Um, the rebuttal to that is our local journalist, Austin Dave, put together a compilation video on his Instagram and basically showing like how it was at Black and Blue. Um, so we're going to watch it and share it with you all. And um, before we get started, it looks like uh, we have a visitor. Valeria's here with us. Hey, Valeria. Hey, Valeria. She said hi. And Monica made some comments too. She said, um, yes, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> the landfill stinks. Um, Valeria says probably best they closed. Um, black and blue because there was a lot of crazy stuff going on over well, there. Let's, let's see so the here's the video, video Austin Dave put together. For those of you who don't follow Austin Dave, we're going to share it with and you. And this is at the Valencia Town Center. Yes, black and blue restaurants at um, Town Center. It, well, it was. It was. <laughs> All right. Commuted to code 324300 Town Center Drive, uh, black and blue Valencia, is there unit of one or less? No. Oh. That's so funny, just a little cut on the knee. 1033 on the patch. Just a little cut. Five. You're injured. Something up. happened. To the parking lot. Oh, man. I think I got laid out, probably, huh? I don't know. Oh, my God. This is crazy. You see that girl hanging out the window? Man. It was a hit and run. They, they caught them, I think, at In N Out Burger. Yeah, they were You're driving on the under the influence. Hey, 6-5, we got a large bike, parking garage, it's long. It's going to be right here, black and blue. Back up, back up. Go on the second, go. Knock it off. Yeesh. Shout out MXB, let <laughs> I, I don't even know what happened drugs. right now. <laughs> I, think <laughs> I think anyone who is featured in this uh, compilation Six, must feel really... Uh, so you know you don't want to be in, huh? It's like you, walk, you have a walk of shame after this. Oh. That was fighting back, huh? Some people have superpowers when they're... Wow. Sounds like a big choo-choo train. <laughs> About 1 a.m. we had a shooting at the Black Horrible. and Blue restaurant in the city of Valencia in which a suspect Look at the statue in the back, uh, like reading his paper. Victim, <laughs> Did you see that? I always that look night. in the background when it comes to videos. They have uh, casings there. Yeah, it's just crazy. I think it's probably best, you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> she was went down. <laughs> oh my gosh, is that blood? We learned that there was a, a altercation, a verbal altercation inside the establishment. It just took me like a quick second to like really grasp, like did this really just happen? <laughs> I'm glad we so, never went there. Well, this this leads to the question, right? Um, everybody's like, oh, you know, when when I'm we get a lot of people to move up here right. from down south. Oh, but there's nothing to do up there. You know, there's there's no nightlife up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, is this what you want, <laughs> right? The, I mean, because that that a lot of people went there for nightlife, right? I mean, not really people that we hang out with, but um, that's what happens. The younger crowds, the bar scene. I mean. There was there was a lot of riffraff up there up the black and blue. Yeah. So now that it has closed, you know, there's been a lot of businesses that have been there and have gone under. Right. Does anybody remember Tilted Kilt? They were there for a few years. And I remember there was so much. There was a lot of hype with Tilted Kilt. Yeah, but there was a lot of controversy. A lot of people did not want that right. in Santa Clarita. I was really surprised that they were allowed to come up here. Right. Because, um, I mean, if anybody that, that lives up here, like. We don't have gentlemen's clubs out here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know what they're really called, but they don't have those types of, of establishments in Santa Clarita. Right. And it's kind of what people love. That's why that's what attracts people here. That's why families love coming here, you know? Right. And I was surprised when Tilted Kilt went up there, but they, they didn't last. And they're a huge, huge franchise. Right. Right. They're all over the country. I just, what 
business can survive there because nothing has survived. Everything that goes in there, there's been restaurant after restaurant, bar after bar, <laughs> and maybe they have a good year or two year run and then they're done. Yeah, I don't know what would go well there. I mean, it's, have you? Do you remember what it's like inside? It's pretty big inside. Yeah, I I think I went there before it was Tilted Kilt. I think there was a wine bar there a very long time ago or some type of higher end restaurant. I just don't remember what it was. It's pretty big in there. I mean, when are we going to get the Portos? <laughs> just put Portos there, everyone. Just bring the Portos. Get the line wrapping around right there, waiting. People waiting out line outside, the hype. We don't need the nightlife. Just, no, just bring some portos. Just, just Everyone bring, will be happy. Bring me the potato balls. Then you have the parking structure right there. Oh, it would be oh perfect, right? You get your portos, and then you walk over to the movie theater. You're all happy. <laughs> right? You know how happy I'd be if there's a portos oh and then I go to the gosh. movies right after? You got potato balls with you in the theater. Get my chilling. little Cuban sandwich. Oh, what? <laughs> I'd be so hype. I know. That's a great idea. Go talk with someone at the city. You know, the... Cheesecake Factory has been around for a while. Yes, they're they're like a, a couple doors down, right? Mm -hmm. But there was a brewery, right, right? A couple doors down didn't last. Yeah, there was a pizza spot. We also had um, what what was the the big cowboy bar from the valley that came up there? What oh, was it Saddle Ranch. Saddle Ranch came yeah. up. Saddle Ranch again is a huge company, right? right. A, a huge. They left too. They couldn't make it up there. Right. You know, and there was they were having a couple of these like black and blue incidents at Saddle Ranch as well. I, I just I don't know. It's what just people don't know how to control their liquor. Is that what it is? I don't know. Or maybe we just don't see it when we would go out in LA. I don't know. It's just weird. I don't know. Is it that but, bad? But I'm I'm ready for, for some portos. Who's yes. with me? I think uh, Valeria is. She said yes. <laughs> and then Monica said Cuban sandwiches are so good. Okay. I don't even know why you brought that up because I'm really hungry now. <laughs> I'm so hungry. It's lunchtime. <laughs> well, I think this Valencia Town Center has so much potential. It could definitely be a focal point like the Americana. And, you know, speaking of the Americana, we went there this past Sunday and it was packed. Yeah. So... We don't go to malls. That's not our no. thing. And, you know, every blue moon we'd go to Valencia Mall because we had to for some reason or another. I don't remember the last time I went shopping and walking through a mall. Well, I do. I remember the last time we went there was for pictures with Santa. Yeah, but I wasn't there shopping. I know, but we I went walked, there for Santa. But we walked through the mall. Right. Right. And it's dead in there. Even when Santa's I there. I don't understand why it's like that. It makes zero sense to me. There's, there's when no attraction When you could go there. to, you know, Americana and the Glendale Galleria... It was packed. There's people everywhere. Packed. But you know what I was what I was telling you before was the one thing about Valencia is the people that go to the Valencia Mall are from Santa Clarita. Right. You know, the Americana, there's so many different cities around there that th it's not just people from Glendale. There's people from all over going to visit there. I understand what you're saying, but I've lived out here since 92 and that mall used to be packed. There were people walking around shopping. There was life in there. And if anything, since 92, the population out here has grown like probably tenfold. I mean, it's there's a lot of people out here. I think there's a demand to w have a great place to go shopping. And I just don't understand how it is the way it is now. It's like a ghost town in there. It is. And it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And do you think it's maybe just because the rents are so high? What do you think it is? <sighs> I'm not sure. That's a good question. But mm -hmm. I, I know it has new ownership, right? Mm -hmm. We have new ownership. I know that I don't know that it's the CEO, but somebody major in the in the company that that purchased that property, mm -hmm. they moved from Texas to Santa Clarita because they want to oversee the project. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna get it's getting a lot of attention from the people that bought it. Right. And I'm sure it's gonna get a lot of love. And I the rumor is they do want to mix real estate with commercial. Okay. So it's going to get that Americana vibe going. Okay. But I don't know if it's going to get the Americana traffic and success. That's, I mean, that's some big shoes to fill. I don't know if, if it could really realistically do that. Right. Hmm. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Tanya said, Porto's is so good. And Monica said, there's a lot of people now. And yes, the mall is so sad to go to. It's true. There's so much more people not much to do. Oh, so, you know, people aren't out there using all their energy to go shopping. They just go out to bars and get in fights instead. Let's have some fun things to do out here. You know, I, <laughs> I heard another rumor about the mall. What? You know where the Sears shut down everybody? Uh -huh. 
So there, and I don't know this to be true, but it is a rumor from somebody up there in the city uh-huh. that they're throwing around the idea. It's only going to be temporary right. until like the new company does something with the space. But they're thinking about just for a little bit to make it indoor. Um, what was that called? Pickleball courts inside the Sears. There's a pickleball craze here in Santa Cruz, so that's what they're talking about. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not. Uh, I've never played it before, so I don't know. Wow, that mall <laughs> is definitely in a pickle. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan said online shopping. I think that's what he's thinking. That's the reason why these stores are just going out of business and the mall's not looking that good. And you know what? I I used to think that too. Like, oh, online shopping is taking away from these businesses, but. I went to Glendale Galleria and it was packed in there. I went to Minnesota. Uh, granted, it was the Mall of America, but still, that place was packed too. It just, I don't know. Yeah, but okay, two big things you just mentioned here. You're comparing <laughs> Santa Clarita to the Mall of America. That's what I just said. The biggest mall. And then the Americana, which is like the biggest mall in LA, really. Okay. Right? And it's not even in LA, but everybody from LA wants to go visit that, that mall. Yeesh. Well, we went there and we had dinner. We went on a dinner date, which was nice, right? Um, a dinner double date. A dinner double date. And it turns out it was our friend's birthday, too. So that was a good time going there. I had a good time. And l- luckily, usually I'd just turn around and walk away if it was just us. A two-hour wait, no thank you. <laughs> two-hour wait to eat. Good but, thing we didn't have the kids with us. So the husbands got together. We found a nice comfy chair. Right. Caught up for two hours. And then you went shopping with, with Syl, so it worked out. Yeah, so sh- I, I don't remember the last time, again, that I went shopping at a mall. And I immediately regretted the shoe choice I had on. Because, you know, I was trying to look cute, go on a double date, right? So I had wedges on and, like, a sundress. I was feeling myself. And then she's like, you want to shop? I'm like, to go get some flats, Yes. <sighs> <laughs> but we did not find any flats, unfortunately. But Syl did introduce me to her favorite jean place to get some jeans. So I'm rocking that today. And her and I got matching sweaters. So Is that the sweater? Yes, this is the sweater. So Syl, if you're watching and you happen to see this clip, I'm wearing our matching sweater today. I felt like we were teenagers out shopping together. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> you acted like you were some teenagers out shopping. We were. It was so much fun. I had a good time. Um, sh- Sheena is here with us. Hey, Sheena. Hey, Sheena. She said, hey, guys, I think the local mall needs more high-end stores. Is that what it is? I think they just need some store, any type of store. I mean, they have, like, the Banana Republic and Express, right, or one or the other. They used to have higher-end. No, she's talking high-end stores, babe. No, I know. Like, is there there a coach store in there? No, probably not, huh? No coach. No coach. (sighs) You know what they do need? I think the highest end store they had when there was like a lot of stuff there was Michael Kors and that was it. They need a Lego store. Yes, they need a Lego store. store. Well, they got rid of the Disney store. That was our favorite. Yeah, why would, I mean, obviously it's not making money if they got rid of the store, right? Right. Because the Disney store was fun. Way back in the day, the Disney store was huge. It's where the Victoria's Secret is. And it was an experience when you went in there. You would go in one side and out the other, and it was decorated like you were at the park. And then somehow they got booted out of that section into the outdoor area, which was like half the size. And then before you knew it, they shut down. We would go there just after jujitsu just to go hang out with our friends. Because it was fun. And get some ice cream next door. And that like got the craving out of the way for Disney. But yeah, really sad that they got rid of all this stuff. Oh, so Monica said they need the Disney store. Laugh out loud. And you beat me to it. Laugh out loud. So I guess that was a brand decision by Disney. Yes. Now, So now they have, instead of having stores, they have like little stores inside of Target, which is not the same thing. It is not. It's It's, yeah, I can't get down with that. No. Mm-mm. It was an experience that Disney's about experiences. I know. Right. But then they went on the cheap to save some money. Yeah. How much money did you really save? Like, they probably saved a bunch of money. Think about it. They don't have to pay all those individual employees and the space lease. I guess. And then all the stuff they didn't sell. You know, like they have to get all this inventory and whatnot. Whereas Target is probably limited and then they just put it online. It's cheaper. Just yeah, ship it somewhere. Probably right. But again, it takes away from the experience <clears throat> of it all. Yeah, I know. They, a lot of a lot of places like to do that. 
Um, Sheena said Disney closed most of the retail stores after COVID. Boo. I know. That was really sad. Ugh. We'll see. We'll see what this new place does. But Lego store would be awesome because speaking of experience, kids go in there. They're putting stuff together. Yes. I you see all the that. hot new Legos that are out. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, me and the kids go to Walmart just to go check it out. We went the other day. Right. Like to get puzzles. Cause that's an experience too to go. It's fun to go look for puzzles that we're gonna do. Right. And then they want to look at all the new Legos that are out. Right. Now you do it at Walmart. And I don't mean to correct you, but it's Lego. It's Lego. Not Legos. Lego. Lego is not plural. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> we learned that on a uh, Lego Master. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh uh, well, speaking of what's coming to SCV, Chris had another mastermind with Elite X, and they had the COO of the SCV EDC, which is the Santa Clarita Valley Economic Development Corporation, give them an update on what's happening with new upcoming real estate developments in Santa Clarita, and we'll reveal some of the approved and proposed communities coming to Santa Clarita later in the show. But do you want to talk about what's coming? As far as okay. what we're going to talk about later in the oh, show. Okay. Well, well I thought <laughs> you were going to talk about what's coming, and then you're going to talk about real estate later. Or no? Well, just just to highlight what we're going to talk about later is okay. There's master. There's developments for new communities. We're going to talk about mainly residential, right? That are already approved. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about where these are being built, how many homes are being built or are approved to be built, and then there's some stuff that's proposed that you're like, really. Oh. oh, so that is cliffhanger. Some, yeah, some exciting stuff. So just hang out a little bit longer. We'll talk about it shortly. Awesome. Well, what is everyone watching these days and how is ex- how expensive is your streaming platform becoming? Because, you know, we have multiple ones that we subscribe to. Netflix is expecting to raise prices again this year, y'all. But are we grandfathered in or does our price go up? I think we're grandfathered in. I hope we're grandfathered I'm pretty sure in. we are because it, it's always trying to get me to upgrade. Like, Oh. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes the time that I watch TV is when I'm folding laundry. Uh-huh. I'll put something on, I'm folding laundry, watch something at, in the background. But I can't do that sometimes because Santino's watching something downstairs. So it's like, oh, you got to pay extra if mm. you want to watch it on two screens. Nope, not going to do it. But before, we were ahead of the curve. We were saving a ton of money. Right, because we got to a point where cable was over 150 bucks a month. So I spent about $12,000 or $10,000 on cable, and I'm going to explain. Every year, I would subscribe to the NFL um, ticket. ticket, right, so I could watch the NFL games. And every year, I'd threaten to cancel with, with cable, so they'd give me a deal, and then I'd get the ticket for free or right. half off or whatnot. And they're like, you've been a loyal customer for 10 years. And I'm like... Our bill's at least $100 a month, 10 years, 12 months, $12,000. Cut it. I'm not getting it. I don't need to watch every football game. Done. That happened a long time. That's over a decade ago. Yes, we got rid of cable before Santino was born. But let's here's the here's the trick where they got us. Because now you got you got that cable bill got replaced with the internet bill. No, we pay, already had the internet bill. Yeah, but though. it's so expensive now. It's like a hundred something, hundred bucks, it's, I think, for the internet, right? It's been about the same. Okay. Yeah, but, but we added Netflix, which at the time it was only what six ninety nine, four ninety nine a something month, like that. I think something we paid really inexpensive. But we have Netflix. You got Hulu. We got HBO. Uh, it's called Max now. We have mm-hmm. Max. Uh, Amazon Prime's for free because you because you. It's not order. free. Nothing's ever free. Well, you order a bunch of stuff. But we pay there. for Prime. Pay for Prime. What else? Uh, Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. What else we got? Uh, we don't have it anymore. But oh, we, we did have, have Disney. We got the Disney one. Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Oh yeah, that's, that's a big things. one. Peacock. Do we have Peacock too? No, we canceled it. Okay, so that's not on there. That's, we got no, six. wait. I think we have. See, this is how they get you. <laughs> you forget. You get on your auto pay, and then you're just like, wait, what do I have again? And then when you want to watch something on it, you go to try to log in, and you're logged out, and then they're like, oh, you don't have an account. Sign up again, and then you sign up, and then you have two subscriptions now because you forgot which username you used. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we have at least six things. Oh On average, gosh. let's take the average 10, 15 bucks. We're there back up go. to near $100 again. Yeah. They always get you. Got to say goodbye to all those subscriptions. <laughs> well, one thing that we are watching on there. Right. Because now we got some stuff to watch. Before mm-hmm. we kind of ran out of stuff. Now with the new season, the new year, we have some family shows that we're watching. So one of them is the live action Avatar, The Last Airbender. It was released on the 22nd, I think. Okay. So I would say Tino's a big fan of the animated series. And that's 100% accurate. Right. 
he got me like on the second go around because he watched it once by himself and then he wanted to watch it again. Then he got daddy watching. I'm right. watching with him. Then after we watched it twice and he got Nola to watch it. So now we saw it a third time. Mm-hmm. So we're all ready for this last airbender. And so far, it's interesting is what I'll say. We've seen two episodes out of eight. There's eight episodes they put up on Netflix. <coughs> and Tino's been wanting to watch it every day, but Nola hasn't. And I think it's a power struggle that they have going on. She just doesn't want him to watch it because she could tell him no. She has some kind she of She wants over to that. do what she wants to do and he wants to do what he wants to do. Right. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Well, she wants to watch American Idol. Right. Well, he wants to watch it too, but he wants to watch his show first because right. he likes the last airbender more. Um, so yeah, that's okay. We always tell them it's about compromise. And if you guys can't compromise, we're gonna do something that you both don't want to do. So how about that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Monica said, oh, Bobby is watching that show as well with Zoe, and they love it. Oh, my goodness. They're so cute. Zoe is such a daddy's girl. It's the cutest thing ever. (laughs) Uh, I'm glad they like it. I wonder how far they've gotten on it, but I'm sure her and Nola can talk about what they like about that show. Because Nola likes it, too. She just, you know, sometimes she wants to be in charge. Not let her brother have full reign. She loves doing that. Yeah, it's fun. So um, has this season of American Idol found its shining star yet this season? We're also only one episode in. I think right. there's we missed the second op- episode. We haven't seen it yet. So <laughs> by next ep- by the next show of uh, R&R, we'll have Hopefully some Hopefully we will have caught up by then. Maybe. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Well, um, this Friday, this past Friday, I skipped family dinner to go celebrate Machina's birthday. And we went to a speakeasy with um, all her girlfriends to celebrate her birthday. And it was a lot of fun. It was called The Green Room. And it's over in Castaways in Burbank. And wow, she picked the perfect day to have a birthday party. Because, you know, it's been raining a lot. That day, it was clear skies and views for days. It was so beautiful. And the weather was perfect. So we were on this outdoor patio with, like, views and, like, great company and good music. And we had a good time. You got, you, you women look great. I saw some of the pictures. Oh, well, thank you. Everybody thank is you. looking their best. We had a good time. So they have um, some really interesting different types of drinks and appetizers there. And uh, it's really cool because... They bring out like an experience for you. So Sheena got this one drink. It was called Fairest of Them All. And they brought it out on this platter that was like fairy tale inspired with a mirror, like mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. And um, it was cool because I'm like, wow, look at she is the fairest of them all. So that was one of the drinks. How much was that drink? Like $49.99? Actually, it was $24 (sighs) for the experience. Wow. Yeah. I'm experiencing heart palpitations right now. (laughs) I know. That's how they justify that. And I think the concept and the idea is cool, like for them and for the person. Like if you're going to go there for the first time, you get that experience. But if you go again, you just get a regular drink for the regular price, not pay for that experience. But why not? She's a birthday girl and she is the fairest of them all. Um, My one drawback would have been they should have left that on the table for her longer to enjoy. Sure. But they had to they had to take it to the back and get out to the next table. Yeah, they cleaned it out for the next. Yeah. And then they had some really cool um, birthday dessert tray that we uh, did for her. So that was a lot of fun. So this was called the Green Room at the the Green Room at the Castaways in Burbank. Yes. Okay. So what was the vibe there? Like, were you all like young ladies there, older crowd? Like what what was what was the crowd looking like over there? Like our age. Yes, oh, that's, that's my it was type, great. My the music was great. We were having a good time. It was okay. very relaxing. Um, I think the service probably could have been a little bit better, but who cares? You're with your friends having a good time. I don't right. let that stuff bother me. Like life is too short, but I could see how it would let uh, how other people would be uh, annoyed by it. Sure. So, but I I was looking at the clock because you know we have our daily fifty that we do every day with the family. And I forgot to do, well, I didn't, I did forget to do my workout in the morning because I said, let's do it. But I was busy cleaning the house. And then next thing you know, I was getting ready to go out and I was like, I'll just do it when I get home. Right. I looked at my clock and it was what? 1130 when I called you. Right. And so we made up the rule within <laughs> the family 
that if you miss your daily 50 workout, you have to start over. Right. And we're trying to do 50 straight days. Right. So I, I think you were on like day 32 or 33 at the time. That would have stunk if you had to start over. Right. It No, I think it was like day 36 or 7. Something like that. But it was almost midnight and Cinderella had to get home from the ball, right? So I was like, I am going to be there. And Chris was like, well, just so you know, Evelyn's waiting for you to do the workout. I said, just tell her to do it without me. I don't want her to have to start over. But the Navi said I'd be home by 1146. I got home. I ran upstairs, took off my shoes, just put on shorts with the dress I was wearing. And I did that workout (laughs) before the clock struck 12. You go, girl. We even took a picture two minutes before. So, yeah, we did it. But Sheena actually reached out to me and said, did you do it? I didn't get home in time. I was like, oh, yes, I did in my dress and all. Yep, you did it. I'm really proud of you because I didn't think you were going to make it. I was like, what time is she coming home? She's going to miss out. (laughs) That server was taking way too long. Well, since, you know, you decided to skip our family dinner, I'm just messing. Um, I decided to. this is the best time for me to make burgers and then some chicken because, you know, we had a couple people that don't eat. You know, Chris loves his burgers. Yeah, and we got so lucky. First of all, it was a hit. Everybody ate all the food up. All the food was gone. We didn't really have any leftovers. I think I had two patties left over. Right. And I ate those like yesterday. Um, (laughs) But it was a perfect night to enjoy UFC. There was UFC fights. Right. So, And we're kind of like, we've slowly turned into a UFC fan because me and my brothers watch it. Jocelyn likes it. I, well, I guess we're halfway there. You and I mean, I don't understand what constitutes a UFC family just because you watch the fights. Yeah, if everybody's into it, like uh, so, like our friend Joe Mejia, right? They, his whole family watches it. Right. They all sit down together, like how we're watching American Idol. They love to sit down and watch the fights. Right. right? That's what constitutes a UFC family. But there was a bunch of good fights, and then we're appreciating the fights, and we're like, oh look, three out of five fights I think ended in a submission, like a jujitsu nice. submission. Which is cool, you know. We're doing, we gotta gotta see what was going on. So we had a good time. Um, Speaking of jujitsu, if anyone is out there and and you're tired of your same old workout, Chris would love to have you join him over at Checkmat and do some jujitsu. He's loving it, and Santino loves it. So does Nola. Our whole family loves going there. And guess what? Santino got MVP <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, so, it. congrats to Santino. Um, well, switching things up a little bit to real estate. Actually, before we do that, I'm sorry. I'm going to take a little bit of time for myself and talk about myself. Today is my one year anniversary at Orange Theory. So, if anybody is looking for a different type of workout where it's more like HIT type of workout and cardio, hit me up. I love Orange Theory, it's so much fun. And I can't believe it's been a whole year since I've been doing this. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's I think that's the longest and most consistency consistent you went on a workout. Is that it right? It is. It is for sure. And you, I, I could totally see the difference it's it's brought to you in not just looks, but like energy level, right? Right. And and kind of excitement, right? Like because you're like, oh, I, I get to go to my class. You're all pumped up. Yeah, super and then, motivated. And you go to five a.m. classes. Yep. So when you get home, you're like full of energy. Making breakfast, getting the kids lunch ready. It's like, dang, girl, I haven't even got out of bed yet. I know. I'm over here working on my fitness, and everyone's getting gourmet meals in the morning. Look at that. Winning, winning for everybody. Make you work out seven days a week, girl. (laughs) Hey, I was for a minute. (laughs) Valeria said, congrats. Get it, boo. And thank you, Valeria. So Valeria and I, she's, she's my workout buddy. And we hold each other accountable, and we're doing that transformation challenge at the moment. And big shout out to her because we are on track. We are in week six of our transformation challenge. We have a total of eight weeks, and we are almost done with it. We're so, at the finish line. You're almost there. I know. There. We're almost there. So congrats to her, too. And I love seeing her uh, smiling face 5 a.m. in the morning motivating me. Like, let's go. Let's do this. It's awesome. <laughs> and then um, Tanya said, way to go, Corey. Thanks, Tanya. I appreciate you. She's working on her fitness, too. She's on the treadmill. And Losing doing, weight, and, dropping and she's doing pounds. The da- she's doing the daily 50, and she's too. she's doing the daily 50. So I'm super grateful for uh, my friend Shanae convincing me to go to Orange Theory and not letting me say no. She said, nope, you're going you're gonna to be there on Monday or Wednesday? I love that you were open to trying something new. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's, that's all it is. Just be open to trying something new. Yes. Good things happen sometimes. Yes. So thanks for, for your support, too, baby. 
Oh, always. Holding it down with the kids so I could go at five in the morning. I know. I make sure we're all still asleep. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I come home and all the lights are still off. I'm like, what is going on? Get your butts up. It's 6.15. <laughs> it's time to go, everybody. Let's start this day. Well, switching things up to real estate, Chris is going to tell us a little bit about the deal of the week. All right. So this week's uh, deal of the week is in Canyon Country, 16753 High Falls Street. This is like the duplex style properties. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a townhome. Four bedroom, two bathroom, 2,050 square feet for only $650,000. That's a good size townhome. It's for one that of price. the most affordable price per square foot properties in all of Santa Cruz. Ooh. Is it's it not going to last. Did it just come on the market? I think it bombed. Ooh, that one's going to go quick, It's going to go quick. It'll be gone before the week's over. If you guys are looking for an affordable place in a in pretty nice neighborhood, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, call us right now. There's another one in that same neighborhood that's 675 but this is the deal of the week. Ooh. Well, Valeria said, bye, guys. Love you. Have to get back to work. Ooh, work, 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 work. Girl, you better get back to work. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Um, well, back to the drawing board with... Dr- why can't I talk? Back to the drawing board with our Lancaster buyers. Um, we had a home inspection over the weekend, and it revealed some super costly repairs for them. Yeah, so unfortunately, we made an offer on this property, and... I didn't see it because mm-hmm. they went to an open house. Right. So we went ahead and, and uh, did the, it was my first time seeing it. And right off the bat, this is why it's so important to work with an agent. Right. I noticed so many things. I was doing my agent visual inspection. Right. And I was like, come over here really quick, guys. I want to point some things out to you. I don't know if you saw this when you saw, when you were at the open house. It's a home was built in the 1950s. Electrical panel is probably a 80 amp panel. It's original. Oh my gosh, you just plug in the TV and that thing's going to blow. It's going to blow. Plumbing was galvanized. <laughs> windows are original. There was, you know, dry rot all around. The, oh my gosh. Long story short, it's about $50,000 in repairs easily, just with the naked eye. People don't want to do all but, that. But, you know, if you don't know to look for this stuff, you don't know. You're just thinking about, maybe you're just thinking about, oh, the school's nice or... You know, well, look at the nice upgrades, the nice floor and paint they put in here. The interior was really nice. Yes. But nope. the exterior was not and the guts of the house was not. So it's so important to work with a, not only just an agent, a licensed agent, but a seasoned agent. People that know what they're doing, that have a good track record. Right. Absolutely. Oh, well, I'm glad that they did not buy a money pit. But, um, you know, it's going to just take a little bit more time for them to find the right home. So earlier we promised we would tell you about some new developments coming to Santa Clarita. And Chris is going to share those with us right now. Well, just a couple uh, easy ones. Let's go with the proposed properties first or right. projects. These are have not been approved by the city. But there's one on Honor Ranch, mm-hmm. right? So that's about two, three years away. That's an 80-acre uh, project over by, like, the Old Road and, right. like, the um, Tommy Burger. Okay. Okay. The town center, that's what we were just talking about, where the portos can go. Right. They're trying to, the, the rumors are they want to make that like the Americana. Okay, we let's don't, go. We let's don't go, know what city. that's going to be yet, but that's a proposed project, right? They're right. working on that. So no, nothing's been approved yet. If you're coming up the five freeway with the 14 splits, that those that first little um, like farm looking area by mm-hmm. that by that old gym, mm-hmm. it, it was an old uh, mule farm. They're talking about building four uh, story senior center there. We talked about this before on the show. We talked yeah. about it before. So that's proposed. It's probably going to get approved, but that's okay. proposed as well. The Saga Speedway, back when you were here in 92, they still had races there. Yes. And more recently, everybody knows it as a swap, swap meet. meet. No more swap meets, no more races. That stuff is gone 100%. Um, but what they're talking about doing is is building a medical center there. Okay. And even later on top of that, they're talking about building like 600 homes there. Wow. More homes. What are we going to do with all this traffic already, ah, people say, right? Soledad. Uh, Oof. Soledad. Now, if you're behind there, they're talking about Princessa Crossroads. Okay. Another 700 units back there. Oh, my gosh. Okay? Yeah. So that that's more. Now, here's the big one that I was like, what? That Whitaker Burmite location? Yes. So if you're going up Golden Valley and you're passing like the Walmart and Golden Valley High and the new police station. Right. You see all those pumps going? Yeah. Right. And you see them going all the way around. The right? oil wells. The oil wells. Well, behind there is the the um, Whitaker Burmite area. Right? right. 
And you couldn't build on that land for like 30 years. Yeah, because it's toxic. But they say it's fine now because they've done like all this soil stuff Testing. to it. Right. Anyhow, they're talking. That is the biggest project. They're talking about like 6,000 homes going in there. Right. And then they're being. This is just proposed, right? <coughs> oh, wow. But they're talking about my building. My eyes are popping out of my head. They're talking about the city building a surf park in there. Wow. With like a wave pool and stuff. Now, this is like seven to 10 years out. Right. Okay. But this is proposed projects. Do you want to share with us some of the approved projects that we have? Absolutely. But let me just touch. I know that was, we have to get through this quick, but wow, a wave pool. They got to bring out all the stops to try to get someone to go by over there. Are you serious? Think about Come people on. people coming from out the area are not going to care. That's like building on Rocket Dine. Come on. Remember Poltergeist? Building on the Indian burial ground. Oh, my gosh. Well, they definitely do that all the time, everywhere. Yeah. Yeesh. So approved projects. Uh, North Lake over in Cass Steak has 3,150 units approved. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of new homes going in. They Do they have more roads they're planning on building to get in there? Oh my gosh! Uh, the the everyone who lives in Cass State complains about all the truck drivers and the traffic. There's gonna be a lot more commuter traffic too. Okay, well, Tesoro Acres has 850 units. There's gonna be acre lots back in Tesoro. Is that That's what, what that it's means? called? So uh, there, there are bigger lots. So there's already properties going up over there. That's behind Tesoro, and we okay. already have properties that are. are Lenar is up there. K, KB's not up there. Lenar and um, Toll Brothers. Right. Bouquet Canyon has 375 residential units. Again, I hope there's some more roads getting up in there um, because when there's fires, it's hard to get down Bouquet. Sand Canyon Plaza has 588, 580 residential units going in as well. That's Soledad and um, San Canyon. Canyon. Mm -hmm. and They're then, already working on that. Oh, I know. I've seen that go into town. And Five Point Valencia. 20, wait, hold on. Wait, what? 21,500 homes on 10 acres of open and 10 acres of open space. So that's all the stuff behind Magic yeah, Mountain. Yeah, that's going to go along the 126. It's a 10 year project and they're probably like in year three or four right now. Yes. Okay. There's going to be a lot more properties going up over there. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see if this Chiquita landfill doesn't slow that down with all the EPA environmental agencies coming out and well, shutting them down. That See, that stuff's not going to get affected for the stuff that's already been approved. Okay. But that does affect all the proposed projects. Okay. Oh, there's this insect that you know lives in that, that needs to be protected or whatever yeah, it's it a slows frog. it slows that stuff down as it should don't be messing with those frogs and their habitats shoot darn humans um some commercial news scv is trying to bring an incubator here for aerospace and defense and manufacturing innovations Ooh. that's big so they're working really hard to bring more businesses up here uh -huh. and and high-end paying jobs which is going to drive up our real estate prices more because if you're coming out here and you're making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, you're going to be willing to pay more for a house. And these builders know that, right? So they're going to charge more if for they know sure. people are going to pay it. Yep. So it's it's going to if you're already an owner uh, own a home up here, it's great for you. If you don't own a home here yet and you're thinking about it, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Let's go. We'll help you. Vallarta is moving in next to AB Bionics Building. So that's right that's off the huge. 126 and the 5. Mm -hmm. they, they brought their business up here. That's that's huge. It is. They're attracting these big companies to come up here. Right. And Princess Cruises is consolidating all of their employees into one building over at Town Center and trying to sublease out the other three buildings. It just some interesting news that I thought people yeah. would find, you know, like, oh, wow. I really think a lot that? of their um, employees work from home now. Remotely. They do. COVID's changed everything. They're being smart about it. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, hey, OK, great. We'll keep one building, but we're going to save some money and, and rent out the other three. Right. Uh, Shadowbox Studios is supposed to bring a billion dollars of direct and indirect economic stimulus to SCV, too. Well, look, there's 16 studios that they're building, right? Mm -hmm. And this is over like Placerita area. Right. So they got to fill those studio jobs. On average, those guys are making hundred grand a year. The people that mm -hmm. work there, and they're bringing actors, directors, people from all out of the area that are going to be having lunch, dinner, parties, all this stuff here in Santa Cruz. So that's why we're coming up with a billion dollars. That's that's what's forecasted for them. They didn't get that mall right for all these people. Come they got to do it. Well, looking ahead to next week, Chris is planning on getting out to the range soon. If the swelling on his foot goes down, oh, I could do it with one foot. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so that's not the gun range. It's the golf. 
Yes. The golf range. Go hit some balls. Go hit some balls. And Nola has a bowling play date with one of her besties coming up. I'm curious. This is a question for parents out there. When did play dates become so extra? Whatever just happened to, like, let's get together, hang out, play in the backyard, play in the house if it's raining. Well, before we didn't even play have, games, we, board games. We didn't have play dates before. It was get home before the before it gets dark outside. That was us. Like when we were growing up, our parents were working, and they just knew you stay, go outside, play with your friends, don't go far, ride your bike, go on your skates, do what you need to do, and make sure that you're home when it's dinner time. So now we got these things called play dates, and they're it's a lot to try to schedule them because everyone has busy lives. But I just want to like hang out. It's not a big production. Well, you should have said that, right? <laughs> hey, why can't we just, you just want to hang out instead? Why don't you come over? Did you say that? No, I didn't. Well, there you go. I'm going to have to next time. There you go. You got to speak up, girl. I know. I know. I need I need to. Well, I'll, I don't know. If they offer to do that, they want to do that, okay. Okay. That's what they want to do. <laughs> Does anyone else feel the same way? I just want to hang out, chill. Yeah, I like to chill. You know right? that. Well, uh, speaking of chilling, this Saturday, we will be celebrating our sister-in-law, Tanya's birthday. It's her 22nd birthday at family dinner, and we are going to have a good time celebrating you, Tanya. We're going to have some mocktails up in there and whatever your favorite dish and dessert is. I was, I've been trying to, on the low, find out what she wanted, but Patrick's been ignoring me. It happens. Yeah. So I, I asked her directly today. She's going to let me know what she wants. And I'll be back out in the field, so... You know, it's it's really picking up as far as showing property. So we'll be in Camarillo, Oxnard, Lancaster, yeah. kind of like all over the place. Right. You know, and it's Antelope Valley's turned into that first time home buyer market because right. that's where a lot of first time home buyers can afford. Mm -hmm. And Camarillo, Oxnard, Ventura, Thousand Oaks, that's really where a lot of boomers and a lot of empty nesters are leaving Santa Clarita right. and buying in this cooler climate areas right yeah, so they'd be close to the beach who doesn't want to be near the beach yeah that's a no-brainer for me so nice oh my goodness well speaking of oxnard we'll be meeting with contractors at the at the house this sunday and get some estimates um we're getting closer to the approval hopefully we could get started on some construction soon hopefully we get it done this year <laughs> we'll see well uh tanya is excited about her birthday she said oh yes can't wait it's going to be fun. So we're going to be celebrating her. Well, in exciting news, everyone, get ready because we have secured our client appreciation event date and location. It is going to be on March 22nd, and it's going to be an unlim a very limited engagement. So I'm serious when I tell you we can only have 75 people there because the space is very intimate. Um, we want to be able to talk with all of our friends and clients and family i mean they are all become friends and family our clients do um, but it's a night to get out and celebrate our clients and show our appreciation um, this time around it's this place is really cool i think you're gonna love it so when you get your invite you better rsvp right away because we can only bring 75 people it's the first 75 so we want you to come we want you to rsvp but only rsvp if you can make it right because it's capped at 75. Usually we have about 100 to 125 people at these events, right. these night events. We, it's That venue's not that, that big. Actually, 75. last year we had 140 people. 140 people, so half. Yes. So you don't want to miss it. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's food, there's drinks, and there's entertainment. Yes, so I'll be working on the invites this weekend, um, but mark it on your calendar. And if you're interested in going, just like drop me a line so then I could – Send you a text like, hey, they just went out. You better RSVP because I want to make sure that you get in there. And who knows, if we have such a huge um, demand for everyone who wants to come, maybe we'll add another event. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it all depends on the demand. So we'll see how that goes. Well, everyone, that is going to be our show today. Thank you again for hanging out with us here on r and R Relationships and Real Estate. Be sure to catch us weekly on Facebook Live, or you can watch the show on YouTube. And to listen anytime you want, you can download full episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. We are your hosts, Corey and Chris Silva, and we will catch you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>